हेलो या वेलकम टू ग्रुप थियोरी लेक्चर इलेवन सो वी हैड कंप्लीटेड यूनिट वन लास्ट टाइम एंड विथ अ न्यू लुक वी आर स्टार्टिंग यूनिट टू दिस टाइम सो वॉट वी हैव डिस्कस इन लास्ट इन द एंड ऑफ यूनिट वन वॉज होमोमोफिजम एंड आइसोमोफिजम एंड देन वी आर डिस्कस फर्स्ट आइसोमोफिजम थियरम विच वॉज लेफ्ट एज एक्सरसाइज बिकॉज वी हैड ऑलरेडी डन इन द अंडर ग्रेजुएट एंड then we had discussed cauchy's theorem for uh, finite abelian groups so continuing uh, the topic on isomorphism so we'll consider a special case of isomorphism that is called automorphism so our topic today is uh, automorphisms what is an automorphism a hom uh, isomorphism let so let g be a group an isomorphism of g on to itself so it's a homomorphism which is 1 1 and on to so g on to itself this is important it is on to on to isomorphism isomorphism means 1 1 and homomorphism and this is g on to itself so g to g 1 1 on to homomorphism is called and automorphism of g and uh, we we fix a notation uh, on about the set of not set of automorphisms of g so we denote by odd g so this is a standard notation or here also we denote by this script ag uh, we denote by odd g or script ag the set of set of all automorphisms of g uh, so this is script ag there is another ag which we have seen so recall this notation as as was the set of all bijective functions from a non empty set s to itself right this we have seen in first unit uh, set of all bijective functions from a non empty set s to itself so s to s on to in fact because here bijective is i have written so a s so what is ag so ag is is the set of all 1 1 and on to functions 1 1 and on to functions from g to g so this ag is different from this uh, script ag right so this ag we already seen from g to g they are one one on to functions so observe that what we have which one is subset of which observe that this ag or g is subset of ag that is automorphisms of g is subset of the set of all 1 1 and on to this is a group as is a group under composition that we have seen so automorphism means 1 1 on to homomorphism from g to g so automorphism already include 1 1 and on to function so they are not all 1 1 and on to function it's a smaller set 1 1 on to functions which are homomorphisms also so this uh, odd g is a smaller subset so it's a subset and next with what we show is uh, in fact this is a group so the lemma is let g be a group then uh, the set odd g is a group this 
the set of all automorphisms is also a group. In fact, we show that it is a subgroup of AG. Right? So it is already a subset of AG. We show that it is a subgroup of AG. So proof uh, is not difficult. It is simple. First, we show that it is a non-empty set. So clearly, I from G to G identity, it is uh, given by identity function I of X equals to X is an automorphism of G. So that is uh, this map I belongs to odd G already. So this is aut automorphism identity map I X equals to X it's 1 1 1 2 and uh, it is uh, homomorphism also from any group G to G. So it is uh, in A G odd G. So that means thus odd G is a non-empty subset. That is a non-empty uh, subset of A G. So now we show that uh, it is a subgroup of we show that it is a subgroup of A G. Let me add one more page. Yes. Okay. So now we show that odd G is a subgroup of A G. Right? A S is a sub A S is a group. We had proved A S is a group uh, under composition. The very first example, very first few examples in unit one, which we have seen. So A G odd G is a subgroup of uh, A G. We proved. And uh, recall those equivalent conditions of subgroup. We are going to prove separately. Uh, odd G is closed under uh, addition, and odd G is closed under uh, the. I mean, not addition, but the composition operation of group. And odd G is uh, every element has in odd G has an inverse. When you read linear algebra a bit, then this confusion arises. Addition and then. Okay. So first thing. So we take two automorphisms. So we claim uh, odd G is closed under the operation of AG, which is composition we know. So it is closed under composition. Odd G is closed under composition. So let uh, what we take, we take two elements. S and T in odd G. So they are S is a function from G to G, 1, 1, 1, 2 homomorphism. T is also a function from G to G, 1, 1, 1, 2 and homomorphism. What we want to show S composition T is 1, 1, 1, 2 and homomorphism. But uh, we don't need to show 1, 1 and 1, 2 because what we know since uh, odd G is a subset of AG, S and T belongs to AG. And since AG is a group, this we have already seen in first unit as I said, since AG is a group, S and T are in AG and AG is a group. So S composition T, so ST is in AG. So that is, that is what we can say S, ST uh, is 1, 1 and on 2. Right. So ST is already 1, 1, 1, 2. This is we are using the fact that odd G is subset of AG. So AG is a group. So ST is already 1, 1, 1, 2. So what we need to show now is uh, ST is a homomorphism. So it remains to show that. And it's an easy exercise. So it remains to show that ST is a homomorphism. So basically what we are showing composition of two homomorphism is a homomorphism st we are writing which we, we are not actually writing s o t actually it is a composition so we write s o t but we write s t just uh, we don't specify that uh, o in the, for the composition so in short we show that so we show that uh, composition of two homomorphism is also homomorphism
so this is what we are showing so when we want to show that some map is a homomorphism what we do so we take a let uh, so st st we know this is a function from g to g as composition t so let we take two elements x and y in g then so st of uh, x y right uh, so this is we want to show that f of x y equals to f x f y so st of x y equals to st of x st of y so what we do is we apply this map so s and t of x y so this is nothing but a definition of composition right s composition t at x is s of t of x so this is just a definition of composition nothing else is used now we use the fact that t is homomorphism so t of x y equals to t x t y so here we are using that t is a homomorphism because t is automorphism s is automorphism we have taken so t is automorphism so t here t is homomorphism and now this is what this is x1 and this is x2 t of x let us uh, think of it as x1 and uh, t of y think of it as x2 so s of uh, x1 x2 what will that be s of x1 s of x2 y because s is also a homomorphism so this will be s of t of x s of t of y the reason is s is a homomorphism and this is what this is nothing but uh, s composition t which we are writing as st only st of x and st of y so st is a map f let us call it f so f of x y equals to f x f y this we have shown so with this uh, again uh, composition just definition of composition so what we have shown that uh, st is uh, in it's a homomorphism and st is already 1 1 2 so st belongs to so thus st belongs to odd g so st is an automorphism and uh, yeah so s this odd g is closed under the composition s and t we have started st is in odd g now we show that every element has inverse every element has an inverse in odd g so now we show that every element in odd g has an inverse in odd g so first we start with this when when we shown, want to show that every element has something we start with an arbitrary element so let uh, t belongs to odd g but this is subset of ag right and ag is a group so t is uh, in ag ag is a group so t inverse is in ag since ag is a group we can say that uh, t inverse let me write here itself t inverse is in ag so t inverse is already 1 1 and not 2 so it remains to show that t inverse is uh, a homomorphism so it remains to show that t inverse from g to g is a homomorphism right so that is uh, we have to show that so what we have to show we have to show this t inverse uh, x y equals to uh, t inverse x t inverse y right so t inverse x y we have to show that this is t inverse x t inverse y for every x y in in g this is what we have to show but uh, so if we apply t on both sides what we can show that x y so left hand side when we apply t what we can show that it is x y equals to t of this so we start with x y so now x y we can write as 
x is nothing but i of x identity map i y equals to y so i x i y and uh, this is nothing but t t inverse t t inverse of x and again t t inverse of uh, y identity i equals to t t inverse x t t inverse y and then apply t inverse on both sides so this implies t inverse xy this is equals to so when i apply t inverse here t inverse of uh, t t inverse x and uh, so okay before that uh, let me write this one more step so t since t is homomorphism so let me yeah so we are going to use that fact also so this is this is the idea so t t inverse x so t of uh, t inverse x t inverse y what is the reason here we are using that uh, t belongs to odd g that is uh, t is a homomorphism so t of uh, t of x1 t of x2 so this is like x1 for me i call this element as x1 i call this element as x2 so this is t of x1 x2 equals to t of x1 t of x2 so t is homomorphism now I apply t inverse on both sides so t inverse xy equals to uh, yeah so now this will be t inverse of this is so directly this t inverse t gets cancelled so I'll let me write like this t inverse this t inverse y clear just uh, if necessary just go back in the video and just uh, clarify this right so t inverse is uh, actually a homomorphism so t inverse is in so the t inverse so t inverse belongs to or g because it already it was one one and one two and uh, now we have shown that this is homomorphism so it is on or g and hence uh, we can say that or g is a subgroup of a g right so or g is a subgroup of a g so it is a group to show that it is a group what we have shown that uh, we know already automorphisms are 1 1 and 1 2 and we use the fact that set of all 1 1 and 1 2 functions from any set s to it itself so in here instead of s we are taking g so that is already a group we are using that fact and we can easily show that it has sub we have shown that it has a subgroup it is a subgroup and uh, so hence it is a group now the question is uh, whether do we get always a non-trivial automorphism so we consider two examples and we give the answer of answer of this so this is a first example so let g be a group and t from g to g be defined by t of x equals to x inverse for all x in g so we have defined this then uh, we have three things first one let me write here first one uh, t is 1 1 and 1 2 t belongs to a g second one t is non-trivial uh, if and only if there is an element so there is an x0 in g there is an x0 in g such that x0 is not self inverse so that means x0 inverse is not itself and third T is uh, an automorphism if and only if G is abelian. So these are the three things uh, we can conclude. 
t is automorphism if and only if uh, g is abelian. So let us verify this quickly all these three. So first uh, one t of x so I am not writing all the details here we just write uh, t of x equals to t of y this implies x inverse equals to y inverse so taking inverse both sides so this implies x equals to y this implies t is so this is not a very good way to write I am saying again this is not a very good way to write but I am just uh, writing like this right just quickly going through this I in, in the meet google meet I had given this for uh, as an exercise I mean as a classwork I had asked you to verify you already have verified and what about onto so let uh, y belongs to g then since g is a group y inverse belongs to g and what is t of y inverse t of y inverse is the inverse y inverse inverse equals to y so hence t is on to right so t is 1 1 and on to second was uh, t is non-trivial if and only if there is an element which is not self inverse so x0 inverse is not x0 so let us take uh, we start with suppose x0 is x0 belongs to g such that x0 it is very trivial so x0 is not equals to x0 inverse uh, this implies if and only if what does this mean x0 so i of x0 is not equals to t of uh, x0 because t of x0 is x0 inverse and i of x0 is x0 so uh, for for this x0 so that means these two maps are not same so that means i is not equal to t so this proves the second one and about the third one so third one uh, is a t is a homomorphism so t belongs to odd g odd g because it is already in a g so now to show that t is a homomorphism what we have to show is uh, it is sufficient to show that i mean to show that t is automorphism it is sufficient to show that t is a uh, homomorphism so we'll show that t is homomorphism then by definition if and only if uh, t of x y equals to t x t y so this implies x y inverse equals to x inverse y inverse now if we take inverse on both sides so what we have x y inverse inverse again this is uh, x inverse y inverse inverse and so here we have x y and we here we have y inverse inverse and x inverse inverse which is nothing but y x uh, of course this is for all x y in g so this is same for all x y in g For all xy belongs to g and therefore we can say that this implies uh, g is abelian i hope uh, you can see this color it's very light okay so that means uh, g is abelian then we have a homomorphism which is non-trivial only in this case only in this case this is non-trivial so if g is an abelian group and it has an element which is not of order 2 why order 2 I am saying because this implies x0 square is not equals to is not equals to identity so that means there is an element in an abelian group there is an element which is not of order 2 then we have a non-trivial auto automorphism so uh, for example in z2 this automorphism is not uh, non-trivial it will be trivial in clean for group all the elements e a b c except identity all other elements a b and c they are of order 2 and therefore it will not work in that also it will be a trivial automorphism but otherwise uh, it will work and now consider another example of an auto automorphism 
and uh, that will be be an automorphism in case uh, when g is non abelian so consider again another example let g be a group and g belongs to g so for some fixed element we define a map so with every fixed element we can define a map like this t g t from g to g by so define this so what we do is we define for so this is the fixed element g here define this by tg of x equals to g x g inverse for all x in g so then we show that uh, t is an automorphism tg is an automorphism then tg belongs to odd g so we show that this is an automorphism so how do we show that this is automorphism see remember g is fixed here g we are not changing don't take tgh so i have seen uh, many of us making this mistake tgh equals to tgth this is uh, not the case to show that uh, this map tg so map should be fixed so this tg has to be fixed so tg of uh, for any xy x and y are changing when we want to show that is homomorphism so let us first show that uh, so let me show first homomorphism then we show that one 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 two or anyway any order you prefer so for uh, x and y in g tg of uh, xy equals to we have g xy g inverse but then we can write this as t so g x ey identity we can write and g inverse and this you can write as x then g inverse g y g inverse right so what we are doing so we are writing here c x y we are just inserted identity here and then this identity we have written as g inverse g not g g inverse g inverse g because we are going to make this pair so the first three g x g inverse this is going to be tgx and then the last three gyg inverse this is going to be tgy so for any x y and g tg of x y equals to tgx tgy and hence uh, what i can write here hence tg is a uh, it's a homomorphism right so tg is a homomorphism and uh, then we show that tg is 1 1 and 1 2 then we are done so suppose or tg of x equals to tg of y let us say what does this mean this mean that uh, gx g inverse equals to gy g inverse but this means that multiply by g on right both sides so we have gx equals to gy and then multiply by g inverse on the left on both sides so we have x equals to y and so t is tg so not t tg because the map is uh, dependent on the fixed element g gx g inverse we are using so it is one one what about on two so let uh, y belongs to g the codomain right and then uh, because g is a group we have g inverse y g belongs to g right so this time we are taking g inverse y g why i am taking like this see actually how did this element come from in the air so let me not write like this how do we show that it is on to the technique is like this so when you to show on, show on to tg is a map from g to g and from here we have taken an element y we want some element x here such that we want some element x here so that uh, tg of x equals to y as such i am go 
right so how do we do the technique is that uh, apply and then go back but the back calculation we don't show so this implies tg of x equals to gx g inverse see what we want to find we are we are starting with y y in the codomain we are starting with what we want to find we want to find x in the domain but we don't know uh, x kaisa hoga so let us find out how that x so first assume that it is on to hum log on to prove karne ke liye this is how the technique is used and back calculation how to find x and then we just uh, write that we don't mention it as x suppose x is there x milta hai man lo then it is gx g inverse equals to y then what will be the x x equals to multiply so so gx equals to yg multiply by g on the right side both sides and uh, multiply by g inverse on left side both sides so x equals to uh, g inverse yg mil gaya x right so then i say that let y belongs to g so this is one one part and this is our own two part so y in g we have started with y in the codomain then what we are taking x there is no mentioning of x but then since g is a group all this all this composition this multiplication all the product this element g inverse uh, y g belongs to g and and we are not showing anything but and t g of uh, this element g inverse y g this is equals to what is the formula for t g t g of x is g x g inverse so g x g inverse what is x in in place of x we have this in place of x we have this right so and this is g inverse y g right so this is what so this is uh, e y and g g inverse is again e i o i and so this is e now oh, sorry this is y so we started with the y belongs to g we have found some element here and whose image is y so that means uh, this is on to so this is how the back calculation is done then now this is removed from the rough work so we don't have to remember that uh, this element is like this we can go and do the back calculation and then with practice and intuition it will automatically come back back calculation karne ki zarurat nahi padegi with uh, practice we will we'll get an intuition ki yahan pe kaun sa element lena hai so then uh, the t is on on to tg is uh, on to so hence tg belongs to ag and since t is homomorphism so tg is a uh, homomorphism and in it, it is in ag so that means it is a homomorphism which is bijective so uh, tg belongs to odd g so we have got an automorphism but the question is when it is non trivial see when the in the earlier case we had an abelian group now in this case if we have an abelian group then what will happen this gx will become xg right so gx becomes xg and therefore uh, this will become x g g inverse which is again x so t g of x is x so it will become an identity map so in in case of abelian group this is not going to work so uh, when it is non trivial that is the remark uh, we are writing here uh if g is non abelian so the group is non abelian see abelian group means ab equals to ba for every ab in g every ab commutes if g is non abelian that means there is this exist one pair we can we can find two elements which do not commute so if g is non abelian then there exists a and b in g such that ab is not equals to ba right so if g is non abelian then there exists such a pair and uh, this implies and so so we can write that uh, we should make the use of the fact that a is not equals to so multiply by b inverse so from this what we can write a is not equals to b a b inverse so right so multiply by b inverse so a is not equals to b a b inverse and now 
now what is the map so now what is TB so so now that means so here we can say that that is uh, what is uh, a so this BAB inverse BAB inverse is nothing but TB of a right so by definition TB of a is not equals to a is nothing but identity of a so a is identity of a I can write like this and what is this this is nothing but TB of a TG of X is G X G inverse so TB of A is B A B inverse so that means this map so that is this TB is not equals to I so thus G is a, if G is a non abelian group then there is a non trivial automorphism TB non trivial means it is not identity so in case of non abelian group we get uh, this is non trivial automorphism in case of abelian group where there is at least one element which, which, whose order is not two we get non trivial automorphism just does g if uh, if g is non abelian then there is a non trivial automorphism non-trivial automorphism which is that automorphism it is this automorphism this is uh, TB right so TB is a non-trivial automorphism uh, of of G so at least one element we can find what is B B is nothing special but G is non abelian there exist A and B so that AB is not equals to BA and that is the B we find and with respect to that B we get a map TB and that map is non trivial right okay so this automorphisms are of special kind and they have special name so we define that uh, we call this as inner automorphisms so the definition is let G be a group and so we fix one element g belongs to g so then the automorphism so we have already shown that this is automorphism so then the automorphism tg from g to g given by or defined by tg of uh, x equals to g x g inverse and for all x in g uh, this is called an inner automorphism so the special name for this automorphism is it is called an inner automorphism corresponding to g there are many inner automorphism you change every element you get uh, change an element you get inner automorphism th so th of x equals to h x h inverse tg of x equals to gx g inverse so with respect to every element you get an inner automorphism so it is inner automorphism and we say that it is corresponding to g so we get the idea that it is denoted by tg and how it is defined gx g inverse for every x in g so it is a inner automorphism corresponding to g belongs to g so this is the definition inner automorphism and uh, corresponding to corresponding to G and the set of all inner automorphism is denoted by the set of all inner automorphisms is uh, denoted by script IG So this is the set of all inner automorphism notation. So that is what is IG? That is a script IG. We can write this as uh, it is an automorphism of this type TG. It's automorphism, but not uh, just any automorphism. It is obtained as above. We have defined it is obtained from one of the elements. So TG 
and uh, for G in G. So this is the set. And uh, now, see, this is a, even a subclass. So we had earlier AS. For any non-empty set a, a, S, a, S was a set of all bijective functions. That was a group. Then we had a subclass. Not only bijective, bijective plus homomorphism on a group G. So that we got odd G. Now we have even a smaller subclass, automorphisms, but not all automorphisms, especially this type of automorphisms, which are arising from an element G. So TG of X equals to GX, G. So it is even a smaller class, right? So it is a subset of, as you can see here, so this is already a subset of odd G. So this is a subset of odd G. So we can prove that this is a subgroup of odd G. Whether is it a subgroup of odd G or no? So that is a lemma which I leave as an exercise for you. Already I left this as exercise in the Google Meet for you. So lemma is uh, let G be a group. Then the set IG script I G that is a set of all inner automorphisms is a group is a in fact we can show that it is a subgroup so first question is is it non-empty can you find an inner, inner automorphism which is there identity whether it is an inner automorphism or it's just an automorphism so that is a question so the proof uh, for this one as i left here in the today's google meet i leave as a uh, an exercise for you right so check that uh, first of all check that it is non-empty and then show that it is a subgroup of uh, odd g so what is the interesting thing is that for every g this is uh, where, where we had ended for every g we have a map we have an element TG, which is an inner automorphism. That means here we have elements of group G. And on the other hand, we have inner automorphisms, IG. So is it true that this map is 1, 1, and 0, 2? So there is, a, you take one element here. You have an element, auto, inner automorphism. You take an inner automorphism, of course, you will have an element here. So this is a bijection. Not only that, what if we start with two elements here, G and H? And then we take TG and TH. And then on the other hand, multiply G and H. So you get GH and there you have TGH. So whether they are same, in other words, whether this map G going TG is a homomorphism or not. So this is the next interesting question one would like to ask. So we state this as a lemma. Lemma is uh, let G be a group. Then ig this is isomorphic to g quotient z where ig ig is what is the group of ig is the group of inner automorphisms of g and z Z is something like, uh, not something like, it is the center, but I think you have seen, you must have defined it as Z or you also must have defined like this in your BSC, something like this, ZG, that is called the center of G is it is the center of G. What is center? center is the set of all those elements which commutes with every other element right so center of the class center of the class kya hota hai? those students which are friends of everyone they are the center of the class everyone is connected to them so it is kind of a center of g all those elements all those um, z in g so that x z equals to zx for every x not just one x z sabke saath commute karega S Z lene hai, said that Z X equals to X Z for every X in G. So this is the center. We have not defined here because uh, 
you already have studied here in uh, your BSc whether it is a center but uh, IG is isomorphic to G quotient Z that is what we want to show now when you see this kind of uh, lemma or oh, one more lemma the mind thinks like that but you can see uh, observe whenever there is some quotient something quotient something is isomorphic to something that means uh, we use first isomorphism theorem a very powerful result which we use and the quotient we know g quotient kernel is isomorphic to image so we need to define a homomorphism whose kernel is z and whose image is ig right what is first isomorphism theorem f is uh, is a homomorphism from g to g bar then g quotient kernel of f is isomorphic to image of f or if the homomorphism is onto then g bar so if i consider onto homomorphism then it is uh, nothing but it is g bar so that means we need to get an onto homomorphism kahan se yahan se so this is the thing so jab quotient hai and the kernel has to be z that is the thing so based on this idea so we define so this is the thing we now define uh, psi from where to where see g quotient z here is g quotient this and that g is the domain of this homomorphism so instead of f we are defining psi so from where to where psi from g to ig g bar is ig so g bar here is alone here it is ig right so g to ig by now we don't know how to define so let us take an element g now what should we define here suppose we don't know but when we proceed we will automatically get an idea so g to ig for every element here we need an inner automorphism now inner automorphism here of course see this is the map you change a map so you change an element you get an inner automorphism so that means we should take here nothing but tg tg is an element in ig now what remains to show now now this becomes an exercise once this is done so keep in mind first isomorphism theorem g to ig we have to define a map looking at the structure of first isomorphism theorem what we are applying here and how the map is defined so psi i define and then i take an element here in the domain psi of g and then what is psi of what should psi of g be defined so g is an element in g i want an element of ig that means i want inner automorphism of course when i have g the clear inner automorphism trivially one should define one what comes in one's mind is tg so this is what we have defined so we have to show that first we show that uh, psi is a homomorphism first we show that psi is a homomorphism that is psi of uh, gh equals to psi g psi h for every gh in g that is what we have to show psi of gh is nothing but it is tgh equals to tg th that means the inner automorphism composition of two inner automorphism tg composition th it is again an inner automorphism which is nothing but tgh so it, inner automorphism with is corresponding to g composition inner automorphism corresponding to h this is nothing but it is inner automorphism corresponding to gh but then this follows from here because here what we are we are proving is that this is a subgroup so subgroup means what so if i take tg and if i take th so tg composition th i should get again an element of ig which is nothing but th so this is so this part once you have done this this already follows so this follows from so that lemma is important huh? show that ig is a subgroup it's very easy one try to show that so this follows from the above lemma right and uh, 
we, we want an onto homomorphism. So is it onto homomorphism? So what is image of psi? So let uh, Tg belongs to Ig. We take an element in the codomain. Element in the codomain means uh, it is an inner automorphism. Inner automorphism, how it is defined? This is the definition of inner automorphism. As you can see clearly, how this is defined, inner automorphism. It is defined like this. Right, so of course, so it, it comes from one element. So in our automorphism, the set is TG such that G belongs to G. All in, in our automorphisms are defined from by come one element. So as soon as we take an inner automorphism, so it will be of the form TG. So we get G. Just say inner automorphism, lenge, it is associated with one element. And then we get, so let this belongs to this, then uh, we get uh, G belongs to G. As soon as we get, we take this fixed G here and uh, Psi of G equals to TG. Chance we are back to that TG, that is what we wanted. And that means uh, Psi is an onto homomorphism. Thus Psi is on. So we have an onto homomorphism. Now, what is the kernel? That is the last thing that remains. Uh, what is the kernel? Then we are uh, ready to apply the first isomorphism theorem. Psi is onto, and uh, so now uh, kernel of psi is the subset of domain. So G belongs to kernel of psi. Now G belongs to kernel of psi. This implies uh, psi of G is identity. What is identity of this? Identity of this is uh, it is TE. What is TE? TE of uh, x is uh, E x E inverse equals to x. So this is nothing but I x. So identity is nothing but this is I. Psi g of psi of g is I. T is I identity automorphism. So one thing also is proved here. This set is a non-empty set because uh, TE is the identity automorphism. So this is inner automorphism. This is automorphism. This is inner. So identity also can be represented as an inner automorphism uh, with respect to corresponding to E. So psi G equals to I. So what is uh, psi G? Psi G is TG. This is the definition of psi here we have taken. Psi G equals to TG. So TG equals to I. That means these two functions are same. That means for all elements they are same. So TG of X equals to I of X for all X uh, in G. And what is TG of X? That means uh, GX uh, G inverse. So GX G inverse equals to X. I of X is X for all X in G. And multiply by G on the right hand side. So GX equals to X G for all X in G. So G, what elements are in the kernel? SA elements G. Those elements G are in the kernel. Which elements? Those elements G for which GX equals to XG for all X in G. SA G agar kernel mein aata hai, toh GX equals to XG for all X in G. That means G commutes with every other elements of group. That means G is in the center. So this implies that G belongs to Z. And G belongs to Z. Conversely, GX equals to XG for all X gx g inverse equals to x that is tg of x equals to ix for all x because for all x they are same that means the maps are same tg equals to i so psi of g equals to i that means g belongs to kernel so this is kernel is uh, nothing but so thus uh, kernel of uh, psi is nothing but z that center of g so hence by first isomorphism theorem G quotient kernel is isomorphic to image, image because it is on to image is nothing but uh, inner automorphism. So by first isomorphism theorem, we have G quotient uh, kernel of psi is isomorphic to image of psi, psi of G, but because psi is on to that is uh, we have g quotient z is isomorphic to psi is onto therefore this is isomorphic to ig 
So this is a very important result. And I think uh, it's almost one hour and whatever we have discussed in the last two Google limit, uh, this is a video of that. Apart from the exercise, uh, some I have already solved which, uh, solved which you have already uh, done in the Google meet. But if you have any doubt, you can compare and uh, a couple of them are still ex exercise. I think this one is the only exercise uh, which is left. So do this exercise and we'll continue. Uh, next. Okay, thank you.